It's Wednesday, February 15th, 2023. Well, more incredibly good news today. Everything's going to be fine. Looks like the stock market's going to be saved. It looks like the economy's going to be saved. It looks like the housing market's going to be saved, saved. Everything's going to be fine. Now, I am being a little facetious here, uh, but uh, <laughs> there is so much hope in these markets. These markets are looking for any type of hope whatsoever. Uh, and we have an article here today. I'll start with this one on CNBC. Retail sales jumped 3% in January, smashing expectations despite inflation increase. This sounds like great news. It looks great on paper. But the 3% is not adjusted for inflation. This means people are spending more money to get less, and they're using credit cards to do this. They're maxing out credit cards to pay for day-to-day -day essentials, pay the bills, pay the utility bills. And maxing out credit cards, and they're paying the highest interest, uh, highest interest rate on those credit cards in all time history, while they've acquired more credit card debt than any other time in history, more household debt than any time in history. So yeah, it sounds good that retail sales jump three percent, but when you don't adjust this number for inflation, it's very very deceiving, and the average person is getting deeper and deeper into debt. Uh, while the Dow Jones up 38 today, NASDAQ up 110, 10-year bond yield, 3.8%. This is going to be very, very bad news for housing. But here's another article uh, today from Fox Business. Home builder sentiment jumps in February by biggest amount in a decade. More great news until you dig a little deeper. Uh, home builder sentiment went from 35 to 42. Anything under 50 uh, is negative. 50 or above is considered positive. So we're still in negative uh, territory here. And we got more data today showing that borrowing cost uh, is rebounding. And if we look at uh, uh, bankrate.com, I looked at 30-year uh, fixed rate on bankrate.com today, 6.71%. What do you think that that is going to do to housing? 6.71% uh, is the average interest or average mortgage rate on a 30-year fixed rate today. Uh, I think it's going to be very, very difficult for the average person to go out and buy a home, and I do believe we're going to be uh, we're going to be surpassing seven percent here uh, very, very soon. You know, it's difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on his not understanding it. You know, have you ever met a real estate agent? Have you ever met a home builder that that said? that, uh, oh, this is a bad time to buy a house. No, that it's always the best time to buy a house according to a realtor, according to a home builder. Today, yesterday, tomorrow, there's never been a bad time to buy a house. It's always a good time to buy a house. Ladies and gentlemen, please understand where we're at. Uh, I personally believe, and this is my opinion, this is the worst possible time to buy a home. I think if you do, you're going to regret it. And you're going to lose a lot of money here. Uh, let's talk about some, some more things happening in this booming economy, the booming stock market, as we're being told daily that everything is okay. Food insecurity hitting senior citizens and active military. Absolutely crazy, says chef and author. If you ever watch the show Restaurant Impossible, Robert Irvine, uh, seems like a really nice guy, smart guy. Uh, he says seniors are cutting out quality foods, they're cutting out meat, and they're eating cheaper food. He also said this, and he was startled by this, active duty military, one in four are food insecure. This is absolutely unforgivable. We are sending money all over planet Earth, and we have one in four active military and their families food insecure, meaning they're not getting enough food. We have thousands of vets sleeping on sidewalks, sleeping on the streets of America, yet we send money all over the world. And I'm not going to sit here and get political, but uh, there is a right, there is a wrong. That is completely wrong. We really need to start taking care of our own business right here at home and our own people before we start worrying about the rest of the world. Uh, here's another one. U.S. on track to add $19 trillion in new debt over 10 years. This is a result of rising costs for interest payments, veterans' health care, 
and the military. The Cong Congressional Budget Office said on Wednesday, the new forecast released today projects a $1.4 trillion gap this year between uh, what the government spends and what it takes in from taxes, tax revenue. Over the next decade, the projection is going to be $2 trillion annually, where uh, they're, they're putting out more than taking in a $2 trillion deficit, ladies and gentlemen. This is absolutely uh, incredible. Uh, here's another one, Yahoo Finance. It's titled, The Gas Bill is $907.13. Sticker shock for Californians as prices soar. And this is another reason why I am saying goodbye to California. I cannot wait to get out of here. Uh, I am looking daily uh, in the South, looking for opportunity, looking for a, a, a deal uh, uh, on a property to get out of here. I cannot wait to get out of here. But uh, according to this article, Brent Eld Eld Eldridge, a pastor in Long Beach, California, opened up his gas bill and could not believe what he saw, a bill for $907.13. Southern California gas said that the average bill for its 21.8 million customers was about $300, uh, more than twice the average uh, of January 2022. How are people going to do this? It's almost like uh, the these utility companies can hijack you. If you don't pay it, they'll just shut your utilities off, uh, maybe put a lien on your house, uh, destroy your credit, whatever whatever they, they want to do. Uh, but it's getting absolutely crazy here in California, and to me, uh, it is getting it, it, it is getting time to leave here, evacuate the state of California. It's getting absolutely ridiculous. The cost here, uh, I, I, where is this a year from now? Where is this two years from now? Are things going to get better? Are they going to get worse in the state of California? Why have so many people left? Why have so many businesses left? And here's a, an article on MSN.com today titled, California's population dropped by 500,000 in two years as exodus continues. Again, it's time to say goodbye to California. Um, you know, over the past year, I've been looking. Uh, I flew out to the south last year. I'll be flying back out uh, late spring this year, uh, talking to agents, looking at properties daily, keeping an eye on things. And unfortunately, the real estate market just hasn't... Uh, woken up to the fact that rates are 6.71%. There are less qualified buyers now. Uh, there is more and more inventory hitting the market. And it's going to take a little bit of time, but sooner or later, sellers are going to realize that prices are going to have to come down. Flippers are going to realize that they made a big mistake. They're going to have to come way down. Uh, but I'm patient. You have to be patient right now. Uh, with what's happening in these markets, the economy and housing, you, you have to exercise patience. Patience is a very important asset right now. But, you know, for me, I, I see what's happening in the state of California. I see the homeless epidemic. I see the high taxation. Uh, they're going to try to tax people who are fleeing this state. Uh, businesses are out of here. And as I said, in I believe it was yesterday's video, people are now sitting at the dinner table, families discussing uh, you know, a, 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 an exit strategy out of California. And I think in the next 24 months, we are going to see a record number of people get out of this state. It is time. Uh, I would have liked to have left uh, six months ago. But, you know, when you have business here, when you have family here, you have obligations here, and you're waiting for this market and prices to come down, you have to be patient. I, I wish I could leave today. I really do. But when you're talking about moving uh, 2,000 plus miles, uh, there's a lot that goes into it. Let me tell you that. But uh, I can tell you this. I'm out of here. There's no doubt about it. I think that there's way more opportunity in, in other states. Uh, it's going to be much cheaper. Utilities, gas, registration of vehicles, vehicle insurance, just the cost of living uh, in other parts of this country versus California are much more appealing. And I, I don't know. I think I would be a hypocrite to sit here and say how bad things are, especially in California, and stay here. If you really believe what is coming, if you really believe that there is going to be economic collapse, that we're going to see problems arise socially, uh, why would you want to be in a state like California? Uh, I certainly wouldn't. And I think that you are a hypocrite to sit here 
and stay in a state like this while saying that everything is going to collapse, you've got to have an exit strategy. This is not a state you want to be in when things collapse. There's too many people here. There's too many people reliant uh, on the system to feed them. There's too many homeless people in this state. The state is now uh, running a deficit. The state is broken. When you look at what they want to do with energy here and getting off uh, fossil fuels and uh, just the amount of money they charge you to register a car, you got to smog a car. There's just so many rules, regulations, and bureaucracy with running a small business. Why would you stay in the state of California? Why would you not get out? And I think that this is like what we have to do now as people is we have to go to places that believe in the same things that we do. We have to go to states that really support what we think, what we believe, and where we're going to find opportunity. There's no way uh, as a small business owner you're going to have opportunity here in California. They're going to tax you to death. So it would be very hypocritical of me to stay in a state like this, and I will be leaving. I can guarantee you that. The Daily Mail. Filthy homeless encampment is set up inside Chicago's O'Hare Airport with vagrants now living next to baggage belts in crime-ridden Windy City. Uh, if you get a chance, check out this article uh, in the Daily Mail. Thousands of people sleeping at the O'Hara International Airport Terminal. I was looking at some of the pictures in this article, bodies just laying everywhere. Uh, some of them barely wearing clothes, people passed out, you don't know if they're dead or alive. There are bodies laying all over O'Hara International Airport. And, you know, being born and raised in Chicago, what a, a tragedy to see what has happened to the great windy city of Chicago uh, such a, a great uh, city, great shopping, great museums, great restaurants, uh, a big sports town, great people. It's over. It's done. Chicago is just never going to come back. It is crime ridden. Now it is being riddled with homeless people in the airport. How is this even allowed? I, I don't understand it. Another one today, Wall Street Journal. To save money, maybe you should skip breakfast. Uh, egg prices up 70.1% over the past year. And here we are, you know, people on fixed incomes, uh, the seniors, uh, people in the military. Hey, just cut out one of your meals. You don't need breakfast. Then it'll be cut out breakfast, cut out lunch. You can just eat dinner. Uh, so this is what people are doing. They're cutting out food. And this is food insecurity. Really, really sad. I mean, think about 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, did you ever think we would ever be talking about these type of topics? Did you ever think that this country would be in the condition that it is in right now, where we have senior citizens, we have vets, uh, we have good people all over this country, food insecure. We have uh, millions of kids not getting enough food, not getting enough nutrition. Uh, it is unbelievable. I thought we were the wealthiest country. We are the biggest debtor nation on planet Earth. And all we can do now is hope that the stock market doesn't collapse, hope that the economy doesn't collapse, hope that the housing market doesn't collapse. Hope is not a strategy, ladies and gentlemen. You are watching the collapse of all this take place right now. And as far as the stock market, it is so detached from reality, but it will collapse, in my opinion, it will collapse and it will collapse so hard. And there's gonna be a lot of opportunity and a lot of sales, and that's why I say put some cash away. Uh, I'm going to finish with this last article coming from The Hedge. Truck overturns in Arizona, spills nitric acid. Driver killed. This happened yesterday. So we have um, rail, railroad cars flying off tracks, train derailments. Now we have uh, semis crashing in Arizona. Uh, more disaster after disaster after disaster. It's, it's just absolutely shocking. Everything is breaking apart in this country. Is it a coincidence? Is it on purpose? That's uh, for you to decide. But at the end of the day, it's happening. It's happening every day. Uh, we see more layoffs every day. We see more disasters every day. We got things floating in the sky. We don't know what they are. Uh, we're, we're supposed to have the number one military we're supposed to be the most advanced uh, uh, country in the world. And yet uh, we have trains flying off the tracks every day, semis crashing, planes crashing, balloons flying all over the place, food, uh, uh, a nation of food insecurity. We have 42 million plus people on food stamps. 
Uh, it just goes on and on and on. It just seems like everything is broken. Last year, we couldn't unload ships. <sighs> I, it, what's next, ladies and gentlemen? That's what you have to ask yourself for. Uh, ask yourself. Uh, but this is why uh, every day uh, we talk about being prepared, being prepared, being prepared. Take every day, take every, you know, take the time to add to preparations. You know, they're going to tell you everything's okay. Look at the stock market. That means everything's okay. It means absolutely nothing. The economy has already collapsed. The system is collapsing right before your very eyes. Honestly, I think that you you're blind if you cannot see what is happening. It's happening right before your very eyes. And I know that somebody's going to say you're very negative, you're very pessimistic, but what is the good news other than we've had a couple days where the stock market has has done better, but it's based on no fundamentals, it's based on nothing but hope. And when you look at uh, today, when the markets continue to go up, and you look at retail sales up 3%, what do you think the Fed is going to do? Uh, they're not seeing the labor market tighten. They're not seeing retail sales go down. Uh, they're going to justify more rate hikes for longer, going to hold those rates longer uh, because of this. Uh, what they're doing is not working. And the markets might be up today. They're ignoring what the Fed is about to do. They're just looking at hope. And now you have the markets uh, fighting the Fed. So we're going to see who wins that. But at the end of the day, this economy is being absolutely slaughtered for the stock market. And sooner or later, the stock market is going to pay a very, very severe price here. We all are. The economy, the housing market, the stock market, the bond market, all of it is going to be in very, very big trouble. And it's all in trouble right now. And that's why I say continue to prepare the best that you can. Think, think outside of the box. Have a skill set, have multiple skill set, sets, know how to do things, and you know, start getting out of the system the best that you can right now. I'm going to leave it there today. God bless all of you. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. Share these videos, and make sure you subscribe.